हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन एप्लीकेशन बाय द नेम कैरियर्स क्लाउड विच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर एंड वंस यू हैव डाउनलोडेड यू कैन लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल आईडी एंड व्हाई आई एम सजेस्टिंग यू दिस एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज दिस इज द वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द करंट अफेयर दिस इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट एप्लीकेशन एंड द प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन एनहेंस योर लर्निंग थ्रू हेल्प here you will be provided with multiple courses here you will be provided with multiple options of quizzes and even you here you will be provided current affairs on daily basis pdfs and quizzes will be provided to you on daily basis both in hindi as well as english here you will be provided current affairs with weekly basis and monthly basis also here remember once you have done watching our video then you can log in through this application take out the pdf read that pdf and go through the quizzes that will enhance your preparation same you have to do for weekly and same you have to do for the monthly also in monthly you will be provided with the top 100 important questions pdf and video also that will enhance your learning and it will be a very benefit and beneficial and important video for the revision perspective and not just this friends apart from this we also provide you banking and economic questions we provide you state current affairs such as of uttarakhand up tripura telangana and many more not just this apart from this we also provide you topic wise current affairs and the topics that we are providing you are really important these topics are such as national affairs international affairs important days sports defense science and technology apps and web portals obviously these are the important topics that are being asked in various exams across india so these are the topics that are must and should be covered and will be beneficial for the preparation of the students hello everyone so in this video we will be discussing important current affairs for 20th of january the session will be quite interesting so do pay attention till the end let's start first is imd's 150th foundation day was observed when imd is your Indian Meteorological Department. This comes under the Ministry of Earth Sciences, right? And they have recently celebrated 150th Foundation Day. That was observed when it was observed on 50th of January 2024. Correct. Mark this. And here, Jagdeep Dhankar ji was our why uh, was Jagdeep Dhankar ji, who is our Vice President, was the chief guest during the celebration of this 150th Foundation. Almost twelve hundred people across all the India part talk about IMD, Indian Meteorological Department. Who is the Director General? Doctor Mrutunjay Mohapatra. Headquarters is in Delhi, and it was established in eighteen seventy five. Next, next is horticulture production and horticulture production. If you are talking about in. 22 2022 and 2023 is estimated to be how much higher so horticulture production in india is estimated to be 2.32% higher to 355.25 million tons right i repeat you can see here that ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare they released the third advance estimate of area and production of various horticulture crops for 22 23 and as per the data the estimations of the total horticulture production for 22 23 is 355.25 million tons which is about 8.07 million tons an increase of 2.32% than the last year right then apart from this if i ask you tell me where was the first indian all girls sainik school inaugurated it was in vrindavan uttar pradesh then next thing remember which will be the first ai city developed in which state it will be in up first ai city will be developed in up right then next tell me how many rajya sabha members are set to retire in 2024 so a total of 68 rajya sabha members will be retiring in 2024 then which state will be setting up a pharma park in lalitpur bundelkhand so pharma park will be set up by uttar pradesh in lalitpur bundelkhand next mei ty they have recently launched india's first graphene center and where was this launched so india's first graphene center was launched by or launched in kerala 
राइट इंडिया फर्स्ट ग्राफीन सेंटर राइट इफ इट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस रिमेंबर इंडिया फर्स्ट आई ओ टी सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस वॉज ऑल्सो लॉन्च दैट इज इंटेलिजेंट आई ओ टी इंटेलिजेंट इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस प्लस फर्स्ट ग्राफीन सेंटर दीज आर द टू थिंग्स दे वर लॉन्च रिसेंटली वेयर दे वर लॉन्च दे वर लॉन्च इन द स्टेट ऑफ केरला एंड दे वर लॉन्च बाय एम ई आई टी वाई दैट इज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इंफॉर्मेशन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो हेयर यू कैन सी टू फ्लैगशिप प्रोग्राम्स नेमली सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस इन इंटेलिजेंट इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग सेंसर एंड फर्स्ट ग्राफीन सेंटर वॉज लॉन्च वेयर दे वर लॉन्च रिसेंटली इन कोची केरला इफ वी टॉक अबाउट इनोवेशन सेंटर ऑफ ग्राफीन दिस आई आई सी जी दिस एम्स टू प्रमोट रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट प्रोडक्ट इनोवेशन एंड कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग इन द एरियाज ऑफ ग्राफीन ग्राफीन इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ मटीरियल राइट एंड देर टू डी मटीरियल सिस्टम दिस आई आई सी जी इज फंडेड बाई एम ई आई टी वाई स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ केरला एंड टाटा स्टील लिमिटेड आई आई सी जी इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड जॉइंटली बाई द सेंटर फॉर मटीरियल फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स टेक्नोलॉजी डिजिटल यूनिवर्सिटी केरला राइट एंड सो ऑन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट सेंटर इन इंटेलिजेंस Internet of Things, that is your Intelligent Internet of Things (IIoT), right? The aim here is to bring research and development in the sensors department, right? And this application will be developed with the support of various industry partners, and this will help the startups at the low level or under the Kusum to grow. And what is Kusum? Kusum we know. Kusum stands for Kerala Startup Mission Ecosystem, right? So coming back, remember two things. So first graphene center and intelligent iot center of excellence they were set up where in kochi kerala next is armed forces medical services afms that comes under ministry of defense and your aims delhi they have recently signed an mou to collaborate in the field of mutual interest combined research academic activities and addressing multidisciplinary scientific and technological issue so coming back afms and aims they signed an mou to address various scientific and technological issues and also to do research and development or various programs next according to brand finance global 500 2024 report which is the strongest brand globally so according to this report globally wechat right has topped the list and it is considered to be the strongest brand Reliance Jio of India is on the seventeenth position, and this is the brand from India that is on the top position. And globally, it is on seventeenth position. Then on top, it is WeChat. After WeChat, it comes YouTube. Right. Then after YouTube, it is Google. Correct. Mark this. This is important. Here you can see as per the eighteenth edition of the Global Five Hundred Twenty Twenty Four Annual Report by Brand Finance. Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani Reliance Jio is on the seventeenth position globally, and in India it is at the top position. Whereas WeChat is on the top position globally. Right? If we talk about Brand Finance, this organization that released this report, who is the chairman and chief executive officer David Hague, and headquarter it is in London, UK. It was established in nineteen ninety six. Next, according to Global Firepower, twenty twenty four military strength ranking, what is the rank of India? So, according to the Global Firepower twenty twenty four ranking, what is the ranking of India in this particular index? It is fourth. Let me show you here in this Global Firepower index, right? Uh, or we can say in this twenty twenty four military strength ranking. released by global firepower what is the rank of india india stood at fourth position on top it is usa then russia then on third is china fourth india and fifth is south korea right next also one more data you can remember us spends the most money on their military spending that is almost 831 billion dollar next IRDA and Indian Overseas Bank they signed an MOU for co-lending renewable energy 
projects we know that the demand of renewable energy is growing we are seeing that more and more funds are also being allocated so that they can even bonds are being allocated so that they can generate money for renewable energy projects for green energy projects so for the same recently IREDA and Indian Overseas Bank they signed an MOU to establish a platform for co-lending and loan syndication of a wide range of renewable energy projects across India also this MOU that is aligning with the government of India's vision of attaining 500 gigawatt of non-fossil based energy generation that is renewable energy generation by 2030. If we talk about IREDA, who is the chairman and managing director here? Pradeep Kumar Das, headquarters is in New Delhi. Next, Bank of Baroda, they have launched Bob 360 term deposit scheme with high interest rate. I repeat, Bob 360 term deposit scheme as the name suggests BOB it was launched by Bank of Baroda. This scheme will offer higher interest rate for domestic term deposits to NRIs or NROs and for citizens for above 360 days. It offers a interest rate of up to 7.6% per annum for 360 days that will include that includes 0.5% for senior citizens. Right. These rates are applicable on retail deposits below 2 crore rupees and effective from 15th of January 2024. Here the scheme will allow a minimum deposit of 1000 rupees and if we look at for the general normal citizens, the interest rate is 7.1%. Correct. And the maximum deposit amount can go from 1000 rupees to 2 CR. If we talk about Bank of Baroda, who is Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer here, Devadat Chand, headquarters in Vadodara, Gujarat, and it was founded in 1908. Next, next is DBS Bank. DBS India Bank collaborated with Startup TN to foster entrepreneurship in Tamil Nadu. I repeat, DBS Bank India, they recently announced their collaboration with Startup Tamil Nadu that is a nodal agency of Tamil Nadu to foster entrepreneurship in Tamil Nadu such as your Kusum Kerala startup mission this is for Kerala and here it is startup TN startup TN is for Tamil Nadu so recently DBS Bank India they have announced their collaboration with startup TN in order to help entrepreneurs MSMEs small businesses grow right this partnership will engage with over 1000 early age startups in Tamil Nadu through startup TN's 8 region host AI labs. This partnership will focus on the startups specifically in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Right? If we talk about DBS Bank, who is Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer here, Surojit Shom, headquarters is in Mumbai, Maharashtra and it was established in 1994. Next is Appointments and Resignations. MHI that is Ministry of Heavy Industries they have constituted a committee to examine the demand for the PLI scheme for your automobiles and auto component industry I repeat recently Ministry of Heavy Industries they have recently formed a panel that will examine the demand for more components in the PLI auto that is your production linked incentive automobile component industry correct this panel will comprise of how many members this panel will be comprising of 11 members right then next thing remember this 11 member committee will include industry experts from various sectors right and mhi has extended the tenure of this pli scheme for automobiles and auto components by one year and intensive uh, incentives will be provided based on the sales for a total of five consecutive financial year that is from financial year 23-24 till financial year 27-28. Correct. Next. Next is Veera Rana appointed as the Chief Secretary of Madhya Pradesh. I repeat, the government of Madhya Pradesh appointed Veera Rana, a 1988 batch IAS officer, has been appointed as the Chief Secretary of Madhya Pradesh. And remember, she became the second Women Chief Secretary of Madhya Pradesh after Nirmala Booch, who served as the first Women Chief Secretary of Madhya Pradesh from 1991 to 1993. Apart from this, she was also given the additional charge who Virarana was given the additional charge as the chairperson of MP Board of Secondary Education. Right? Next, 
नेक्स्ट इज संजय बनोपाध्याय हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड एज द चेयरमैन ऑफ एम्प्लॉय सिलेक्शन बोर्ड आई रिपीट संजय बनोपाध्याय 1988 बैच आईएएस ऑफिसर ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश कैडर हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड एज द चेयरमैन ऑफ एमपी एम्प्लॉय सिलेक्शन बोर्ड करेक्ट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज बर्नाडो हैज बिन स्वॉन इन एज द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ ग्वाटेमाला सो हु हैज बिन स्वॉन इन एज द न्यू प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ ग्वाटेमाला एन एंटी करप्शन लीडर Bernardo was Caesar Bernardo was appointed as the new president of Guatemala. Next is science and technology. Recently ISRO has developed a second generation distress alert transmitter for fishermen. I repeat recently ISRO they have developed a distress alert transmitter or second generation and it is for the fishermen at the sea that will help them to send any emergency message during their fishing adventures from their fishing boats itself i repeat it is isro they have developed a second generation distress alert transmitter it is for fishermen it will be used during the fishing activities fishing adventures right and due to during that time they will be able to send these emergency messages from their fishing boat itself correct next next is obituary recently ajit singh gill as you can see him in the picture singapore's former hockey player and olympian recently passed away ajit singh gill former national hockey player of singapore who competed in the 1956 melbourne olympics passed away at the age of 96 in singapore right next next is important days 19th national disaster response force raising day observed on 19th of january 2020 for i repeat ndrf raising day annually observed across india on 19th of january and it is to establish the uh, it is to commemorate the establishment of ndrf that is national disaster response force 19th of january marks the observance of the 19th edition of the raising day if we talk about ndrf who is the director general here atul karwal headquarter is in new delhi next Next is state news. Recently, Goa became the first state in India to launch a regenerative tourism. I repeat, Goa they have launched India's first regenerative tourism model to redefine the tourism by promoting environmental restoration, cultural preservation, and community empowerment. Right? Mark this. And this model, this regenerative tourism model, aims to promote eleven spiritual sites under Ek Dasha Tirtha. campaign the campaign involves local communities in exploring understanding and projecting their culture cuisine and lifestyle and the model was launched to mark the 62nd anniversary of the liberation of goa that was on 19th of november correct so these were your important current affairs for the day friends now let's go to quick one liner revision imd imd's 150th foundation day on 15th of january horticulture production in 2022 23 estimated to be 2.32% higher then last year then mitty secretary launched india's first graphene center and inter uh, graphene center and intelligent iot center of excellence both in kochi kerala efms and aims they signed an mou to address scientific and technological issues and to do research and development on the same then brand finance global 500 2024 report was released here reliance jio secured the 17th position whereas wechat secured the first position globally Then global fire powers 2024 military strength ranking was released and India ranked fourth here and USA topped then Russia was on second China on third and India on fourth then IRDA and Indian Overseas Bank they signed an MOU for co-lending renewable energy projects Bank of Baroda launched Bank of Baroda 360 term deposit scheme with higher interest rate DBS Bank India collaborated with startup Tamil Nadu to foster entrepreneurship in Tamil Nadu Next MHI they formed a panel and this is a 11 member panel this will examine the demands for the inclusion of more components in auto PLI scheme chaired by Hanif Qureshi important Next Veera Rana appointed as the chief secretary of Madhya Pradesh she became the second woman to be appointed to this position Bernardo has been sworn in as the president of Guatemala ISRO has developed a second generation distress alert transmitter for fishermen Ajit Singh Gill from Singapore's former hockey player recently passed away. 19th National Disaster Response Force Raising Day observed on 19th of January and Goa became the first state in India to launch regenerative tourism to attract more tourism here. So these were your important current affairs for the day. Do like the video friends and also comment below and let us know what are your views for the same doing this will motivate me to make better content for you in the long run. 
नेक्स्ट वी आर मूविंग टू सम रिविजन पार्ट फ्रेंड्स दैट विल बी वेरी बेनिफिशियल फॉर योर लर्निंग Next is Adani Green. They will cross eight. They have crossed the eight point four gigawatt mark and became the India's largest renewable energy company. Then Mudra. It became the India's first port. Where is the Mudra? Where is this Mudra port? First of all, tell me. It is in Gujarat, right? It became the first port to handle sixteen point one million tons of cargo. Then government has launched Bharat Tata initiative for affordable wheat flour. Then tenth edition of the Kalinga Literary Festival was held where in Bhuvaneshwar. then thdc india has signed a pact to develop renewable energy projects in karnataka then new delhi will host 33rd conference on world animal health next is uttarakhand it will become the first state to adopt uniform civil code that is ucc then ayodhya to set guinness record by lighting 22 lakh diyas next is aina dashboard for cities this portal was launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs then meghalaya they have launched food security campaign to achieve zero hunger Next, India ranks second in the employee well-being, and Turkey has secured the first position in this employee's well-being index, and Japan has the lowest index here. Mika, it became the world's first robot CEO. Take a note of this. Then Japan got a new island after the undersea volcano eruption that took place. IMF executive board appointed 50% quota increase. Then sixth meeting of the India OPEC Energy Dialogue was held at Vienna. Then 800 biopic of Sri Lanka cricketer. Muthiya Murlidhan has been released right 800 is the name of that biopic then india ranked 117th among 129 nations in inclusiveness index by us veracity and new zealand secured the first position here next is new zealand launched interactive map for biodiversity restoration next is singh inaugurates power pavilion in uh, uh in new delhi right then Sheetal Mahajan became the first woman to skydive Mount Everest. Correct. Next is PM Modi. He inaugurated PVTG Development Mission and Vikasit Bharat Sankalp Yatra. Next, India will host Second Voice of Global South Summit. Hardeep Singh Puri launched Cities 2.0 in New Delhi. Then Delhi Airport launched Sunflower Initiative. Next, Indian Railways in collaboration with IRCTC to launch Bharat Gaurav Tourist. Next, India and USA they signed an MOU to connect dynamic startup ecosystem. Next is Kochi. Kochi in Corn Nest list of best places to visit in 2024. Right? Then 42nd edition of India International Trade Fair. Where was it inaugurated? At Pragati Maidan. That is in New Delhi. Then WHO and Ministry of Ayush they signed a traditional and complementary medicine. In November, Ministry of Coal amended the Shakti policy to grant coal linkage for a minimum of dash months to a maximum of one year. So recently, Minister of Coal, correct? He amended this Shakti policy to grant coal linkage for a minimum of three years. Or oh, sorry, for a minimum of three months to a maximum of one year. This Shakti. This. Shakti. What is this? Shakti stands for Scheme for Harnessing and Allocating Coal. I repeat, Scheme for Harnessing and Allocating Coal Transparently in India. This is Shakti policy, right? This will allow power plants, including the private generators, without power purchase agreement, to be granted coal linkage for a minimum of three months to one year. Next. Name the ministry that has recently approved the Digital Advertisement Policy 2023 to enable and empower the Central Bureau of Communication. It is Ministry of IB, that is Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. They have approved Digital Advertisement Policy 2023 to enable and empower Central Bureau of Communication, that is the Advertisement Wing of the Government of India, that operates under MIB, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, to conduct campaigns in the digital media space. Next, which country's navy, along with Indian Navy, has recently conducted the fourth edition of the Bongo Saga 23 and the fifth edition of the Coordinated Patrol in the Northern Bay of Bengal? It is Bangladesh, right? Bangladesh Navy, along with Indian Navy, they conducted the fourth edition of this exercise. That is Bongo Saga. That is Bongo Saga 23, and this is the fifth edition of Corpet exercise. in the northern bay of bengal right 
Bongo Sagar, this exercise for the first time it was conducted in 2019. And Corpet, it is a part of this Corpet exercise, right? Of India, Bangladesh Navy, Indian Navy and Bangladesh Navy Corpet exercise that is coordinated patrol. And this was held for the first time in 2018. From there, Indian naval ship, which Indian naval ship took part in this Bongo Sagar? It is INS Kuthar. INS Kuthar took part in this exercise along with INS Kiltan. Next, in which city? Union Minister of Port Shipping and Waterway Sarbandana Sonowal flagged off the maiden voyage of the vessel Costa Serene in November 2023. So, this Costa Serene was flagged off by Sarbandana Sonowalji and it was flagged off from Mumbai, Maharashtra. Right? It was flagged off in Mumbai, Maharashtra. And this Costa Serene, remember, this is the India's first international cruise liner. Correct? And this symbolizes the rise of the rise of cruising or cruise tourism in India, right? This symbolizes the rise of cruise tourism and it is one of the India's first international cruise liner, correct? And it was flagged off in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Next, name the country that has recently announced to fund $44.7 million to strengthen the food security and environmental protection in Uttarakhand under India's The Hunger Project. So it is Norway. Right, Norway is the country that has announced to fund $44.7 million to strengthen the food security and environmental protection in Uttarakhand under the Hunger Project. This funding here will be valid for the next three years, that is until September 2026. And Norway here will aid in promoting food security by providing various productivity for small scale producers for food. Next. Which company has recently collaborated with the Ministry of Women, Child and Development to support the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao initiative? It is Colors. Right? So remember, which company? It is Colors. They have collaborated with Ministry of Women, Child and Development to support the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao initiative. Correct? Mark this. Colors is a channel. Next, in which state or UT, President of India, Draupadi Murmu, ma'am, has recently inaugurated a 250 meter Nav Durga path that is a skywalk and the remodeled Parvati Bhavan. I repeat, in which state the President of India, Draupadi Murmuam, inaugurated a 250 meter Nav Durga path that is a skywalk and remodeled Parvati Bhavan. It is in Jammu and Kashmir. Correct? Mark this. And this was built with a cost of 15.69 crore rupees. This as uh, this particular 250 meter walk skywalk this caters almost 10,000 to 15,000 pilgrims every day next Bhupendra Patel chief minister of Gujarat unveiled the crest of the Indian naval ship dash indigenous under construction guided missile destroyer of project 15b so remember it is INS Surat right Bhupendra Patel chief minister of Gujarat unveiled the crest of the Indian naval ship Surat that is indigenously being built and it is under construction. It is a guided missile destroyer of the project 15B. Next, which state or UT police has recently introduced a global positioning system GPS tracker anklets to monitor the terror accused people out on bail? So, which is it? Which is the state that has recently introduced a GPS tracker anklet to monitor the terror accused people out on bail? It is by Jammu and Kashmir, right? This is to maintain law and order. This device is already used in countries like USA, UK, South Africa, then Australia and New Zealand too. Next, name the minister that recently launched Jal Diwali, Water for Women, Women for Water. This is an awareness campaign that was launched under Amrit in partnership with National Urban Livelihood Mission. So who is that minister or which is that ministry? Correct. Under which ministry this was launched? This was launched by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, right? Mark this. And here, which will be the knowledge partner for this campaign? Odisha Urban Academy. Odisha Urban Academy will be the knowledge partner for this particular campaign, correct? That is Jal Diwali, Water for Women, Women for Water campaign. And it will be held from 7, it was held from 7th to 9th of November in 2020. Next, 
यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ फाइनेंस निर्मला सीतारमन लॉन्च द फेज फोर ऑफ डैश ऑपरेशन बाय इंडियन कस्टम्स इन कोलैबोरेशन विद रीजनल इंटेलिजेंस लाइजन ऑफिसर एशिया पैसेफिक एंड आर आई एल ओ मिडल ईस्ट टू कर्ब द इलीगल ट्रेड ऑफ टिम्बर इंक्लूडिंग रेड सेंटर सो वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ दैट ऑपरेशन इट इज ऑपरेशन शीशा दिस वॉज लॉन्च बाय फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन एंड इट वॉज द फेज फोर ऑफ दिस ऑपरेशन एंड इट इज बेसिकली टू कर्ब द इलीगल ट्रेड ऑफ टिम्बर इंक्लूडिंग द रेड सेंटर्स This operation Shisha were earlier launched in 2015 initially, and this time in 2023 it was the phase four of this operation Shisha launched by Nirmala Sita Raman. Next, Union Minister of Labour and Employment Bhupendra Yadav virtually inaugurated the Dash Foundation Day of the Employees Provident Fund Organisation on 1st of November 2020. Three. So, Union Minister of Law and Employment Bhupendra Yadav virtually inaugurated the 71st Foundation Day. of epfo that was on 1st of november 2023 the event was held at bharat mandpam that is in new delhi next also remember bhavishya nidhi awards bhavishya nidhi awards they were also presented during the 71st epfo foundation day next which financial institution or regulatory body of india has recently signed an mou with din dayal antyodhya yojana national rural livelihood mission to promote women led enterprises in india so which is that financial institution name it it will be small industries development bank of india that is sidbi right they have recently signed a memorandum of understanding with din dayal antyodhya yojana national rural uh, livelihood mission and it is to promote women led enterprises in india correct this mou is for next 2 years next which state has recently launched the water smart kit campaign and initiative under the jal jeevan mission so which is the state that has launched this water smart kit campaign that was launched under jal jeevan mission so which is that state tell me it is meghalaya right meghalaya has launched water smart kit campaign under jal jeevan mission that will be focusing on educating children about water conservation and protection next is our homework section first which state recently launched the mahatri vandana yojana second what is the kanat system recently mentioned in news third which organization developed the second generation distress alert transmitter for fishermen we just saw this question third is fourth is now who has been appointed as the first female neutral umpire by icc for bilateral series fifth Changi's six mission recently seen in news is associated with which country so these are your five homework question friends and i need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of course is offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 7677333862 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official in the end friends if you use a code that is vikas10 you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code vikas10 also if you have any problem regarding the course purchase any problem regarding to our application you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862 and if you want to mail us you can also mail us on support@affairscloud.com and i assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue 